can we take a moment to pray for the territory and to ask that God will open the land to the power of the gospel that everything that has been held down by the kingdom of darkness will be compelled to set at liberty that which God has ordained can we raise our voice in a moment to pray for this land it's a strategic place the Lord set his foot here centuries ago to plant the seed of light we want to make demands on heaven that that light will spring forth in his fullness in his full potential in his full capacity can we cry to him in a moment of time Lord look upon this land you chose this place as a platform of visitation to penetrate the regions of southeastern Nigeria you raise a tower of light through the Anglican mission in this land we refuse that darkness will take over we refuse that demons will be worshipped here we refuse that the cause of the devil will prosper in the land raise your voice and cry to him in a moment we refuse it satan will not capture our nature there is a seed of god that has been planted in the territory god must have a harvest from onicha god must have a harvest from the investment that he made here more than a century ago his harvest must come his harvest must come the kingdom of darkness cannot manipulate it his harvest must come it will come in our generation it must come in our lifetime that such among us that are here present will capture an ordination of God that will be translated into the much awaited harvest that God is expecting from the land from the city of Onicha can you destroy every implement of the kingdom of darkness that have been planted in the territory to hinder the harvest of God destroy it rebel against it come against it tonight oh father oh God we call upon your name we cry we cry concerning the land we cry concerning eastern Nigeria let this beast that troubles the land let the beast be arrested let peace come into the territory in the name of Jesus father this is our plea tonight send reinforcement from heaven to the city of Onicha let there be angelic reinforcement in this city and let everything that you have not planted be rooted out in the name of Jesus Christ <laughs> we ask that your mighty hand will come upon young men young women from this conference your mighty hand of fire your mighty hand of power let this hand let the seeds that you will sow be viable let 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 it let it take root in the hearts of men in the name of jesus Christ. let the spirit of prayer begin to inflict the sons and the daughters of men in the land let the language of prayer become robust robust in the territory and let it swallow up everything that you have not planted in the name of Jesus Christ. Every satanic move that is beginning to prosper, every new technology in the kingdom of darkness that 
that is beginning to attract people every agenda to make people wealthy by darkness that is corrupting the upcoming generation father in the name of jesus christ we command that altar to fall 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 in the name of jesus Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hey, can we ask him? Can we ask him anything that was buried in the in the ground to to advance the kingdom of darkness, to tie the territory to to darkness, to tie the land to iniquity, to tie the the land to to violence, to tie the land to bloodshed, that which was buried. We neutralize his power. Raise your voice, let us cry. I see something in the ground. We reclaim the ground. We reclaim the territory. Is come si copresco fa la boca ti la maselitali. Shai con peso soli ma capresca tala bonde. Esquilo mohoro di ahada bobo reasica. Mis con pela ni so se la ico paminai. We uproot it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Finally, can we ask that God will begin to anoint ministers in the territory afresh, especially with the handle of the supernatural, a fresh anointing, a fresh impartation, a fresh release of grace. Can we pray for the ministers in the land? Can we pray for the ministers in the land? A fresh, a fresh grace, a fresh ability. A fresh enablement by God. Oh, Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Put your hand on every minister of the gospel. Put a fresh grace on your people. Put a fresh grace on, on their wives. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh my father, oh my father, let the gifts of the spirit become actively functional. The gifts of healing, the gifts of working of miracles, the gift of faith, oh, that will become such vessels that will draw attention to Jesus one more time. That Jesus will be made popular. Jesus will be made significant in the territory on the account of the efforts of the preachers, the ministers of the gospel in the land. We ask for an empowerment tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Come and take the territory for yourself. Take the land for yourself. Glorify yourself in the midst of this territory. And from this place, Lord, we speak to southeastern Nigeria that your mighty hand will truncate the plans of the devil. And that the tributaries of revival that will spring forth from these parts will not be hindered in the name of Jesus. Lord, it is time to send us rain. We thank you for mercy drops that we have seen here and there, but we trust you for rain. Send us rain. Send us refreshing from the presence of the Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may be seated. God bless you.
there are four significant things that we must know if we are going to experience a robust participation in God. Four significant things we must note. The first thing, so because of time, we're going to be fast today so that we'll have a sufficient time to minister to the afflicted in our midst. The first thing that you must understand if you are going to maximize the hand of God that is upon your life, if you are going to fully translate the potential of the spiritual capital that God has bestowed upon you, four significant things are paramount. One, you must acknowledge your spiritual inadequacy. You must acknowledge your spiritual inadequacy. You know, we saw it yesterday. I want to read the scripture to us. Second Corinthians chapter 3, beginning from verse number 5. Your inadequacy must come to you as a revelation. It must touch your heart. It must become an ever-present knowledge that is rooted on your heart. That I am insufficient. I am incapacitated. I am a bundle of infirmity and I desperately need the help of God. Now, if it has not come to you as a revelation, <clears throat> because anything that doesn't affect your heart cannot change your life. If all you have is head knowledge, head knowledge doesn't have the ability to effect transformation. And that's why when we listen to sermons, we are supposed to take the um, points that are mentioned in the sermons and travel with them in the place of prayer so that God can cause a migration from cerebral to heart. The, the farthest distance is not from east to west. The farthest distance is the distance from your head to your heart. And if something doesn't touch your heart, it cannot transform your life. So we are not expecting that the measurement of the impact of this meeting will be the cerebral revelations that were released, but it will be the decisions that people made in order to journey with God in a bid to translate things that have been captured in the mind to become realities that are sustained in the heart. Are you, are you, are you with me? All right, so the first thing that we must know, it must come to you as a revelation. Because if it comes to you as a revelation, it's going to drive the entirety of your walk with God. You must acknowledge your spiritual inadequacy. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible says, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves. To think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. This is one scripture. Now, this is the philosophy that Paul had, that was the reason for which he was able to secure so much grace from God. He knew that he was insufficient. And if you turn your Bible to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 26. The Bible re reveals something that looks like division of labor in that scripture. Because the Bible seems to say that it is the spirit that helpeth our infirmities. It's as if in the Godhead there is division of labor. And uh, the member of the Godhead that is assigned to ensure that we receive help from our infirmities happens to be the Spirit of God. If you go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you will see that there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. There are diversities of administrations but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations but the same God that worketh all in all. So you will see that the umpire for gifts is the Spirit. 
the umpire for administrations or ministries or services is the Lord Jesus and the umpire the one behind operations territorially is the father so in the Godhead you will find a certain member of the Godhead might be assigned to a particular aspect for instance the Bible says it is the spirit that quicken it are you with me the flesh profits nothing so when we talk about the agency of God that is put in place to help our weaknesses to help our insufficiencies that agency of God happens over the Holy Spirit but you see the ministry of the Holy Spirit in helping us to overcome our insufficiencies will not be activated if we do not acknowledge our incapacity and are you with me when the Lord begins to empower you and it becomes visible becomes notable that the hand of God is upon you if you are not discipled in the ways of the Lord there is a possibility for you to come out with pride meanwhile the system of the new covenant is the system of grace I know so many of us here are theologians so I don't need to tell you about grace but that's the system that powers the new covenant the previous system that was obtainable was the system of the law and in the system of the law God makes acquaints us with his expectations with his value systems with his with his with his ideals and he leaves us to furnish his ideals from the resources of our humanity uh, so it is not the standards of God that are wrong it's just that we are so falling that in our falling state we lack the capacity to provide the expectation that God sustains so in the New Testament a different system is put in place and it's the system of grace and in the system of grace it's not as if God reduced the standard indeed he increased it but he creates an enablement possibility within the covenant and this enablement possibility the reality of this enablement possibility is the activity of the Holy Spirit giving us the capacity to be able to live up to the expectation that God sustains oh you are not with me well I notice you are not here so um, because of that we need to do take that point deeper if you if you had gotten the point we'll go to the next one but you didn't get it in the book of Romans therefore I'd like to show you a few things the book of Romans chapter 6 and I would like us to see the there is for every layer every layer of investment that God makes there is an expectation that heaven sustains every layer of investment now let's are you there in Romans in Romans chapter 6 verse 1 we have a question and if in Romans chapter 5 we begin to see the Apostle Paul trying to educate us and to give us insight into the two aspects of our redemption the legal side and the living side the attempt at satisfying the claims of divine justice vis-a-vis -vis the organic reality that is powered by the Holy Spirit uh, because um, the fall of man touched on the justice system of heaven there is the judicial aspect of our salvation it was God himself that came to Adam in the garden 
to reveal the position of the justice system of heaven in a situation where Adam eats of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God showed him that the consequence from the perspective of justice is that he will have to die. In fact, in the Hebrew it is written, in dying ye shall surely die. In the day that you eat of this fruit, in dying ye shall surely die. You shall die without fail. That's the position of the justice system of heaven. Are you with me? So in the book of Romans chapter 5, the judicial aspects of our redemption was adequately captured and how that the death of Jesus Christ satisfied the claims of divine justice. So the quarrel that God had with humankind was seated on the account of what Jesus did on the cross and what is left for every man on earth is to identify what with what Jesus did by exercising faith in the accomplishments of the cross. Now after Paul had shown us the judicial aspect, Paul now showed us the organic aspect. And he began talking about the organic aspect of our salvation from the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 10. In Romans chapter 5 verse 10, I just want to give us a background before we go to Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 5 verse 10, he gives us a summary of the judicial aspect and gives us an entry into the organic aspect. For he says, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. That's the judicial aspect. Reconciliation with God was achieved by Jesus satisfying the claims of divine justice. So he, he, he gives a summary of how reconciliation was achieved. Our quarrel with God was settled because Jesus came and satisfied the requirements of justice. So if you are preaching to a new convert and you are compelled to give the convert a little insight into the realities of his salvation. If you say, are you with me? If you say, the way God saved us is by his love, because it is written, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If that's all you say, um, your presentation is defective. Now, let me give you an idea. Maybe I'm a principal of a school. Are you with me? Stay with me. I'm a principal of the school and part of the prospectus, the content of the prospectus of the school is that if you break this speaker, you will pay 100000 it's on the prospectus. So everyone that gains admission to the school is given that document. And the speaker survived many academic sessions until my own child now, gained, me the principal, my own child now gains admission to the school. And then my child is now the one that breaks the speaker. So my wife now comes and says, ah, but it's our son. The fact that he's our son and we love him does not change the position that is on the prospectus. In fact, because he's our son and I love him, that is the reason why I will take money from my account and pay the 100000 to satisfy the demand of the prospectus. So it is not just empty love we are talking about. Are you with me? It's an, it's, it's an active love that was revealed in an effort to satisfy justice. Are you there? It's an active law. That is what? 
revealed in an effort to satisfy justice. So if you, if you need to go deeper on that, your presentation, you need to bring the judicial aspect to support that love agenda so that the person will know that, are you there? Our salvation is rooted in, in law. So even though God changes his mind that he's no longer loving us, he cannot change the position of law. Okay, you didn't get it. I'm, I'm very sorry for bringing you here because you didn't get it. Okay, let's, in fact, the syllabus, we have cut it. The syllabus has been mutilated. <laughs> Are you there? So the judicial aspect has been fulfilled and is saying in the judicial charter that the basis of our reconciliation with God was the death of his son. So justice was satisfied. Hmm? But the reason for which justice was satisfied and the reason for which redemption became possible, necessary, is because God was offering us participation in his kingdom as his original plan. That was what he offered Adam in the, in the Garden of Eden. If we want to define this man called Adam. There is no way we can define man, M-A-N, in the plan of God outside of God's dream, God's ambition to include man as an administrative personnel in his kingdom so that through man, God's influence can be extended into the physical realm. If we take the understanding of man out of that crucible, then man Man has no reason for existence because part and parcel of the dream of God was that man would be a functionary that operates with delegated authority thereby having the capacity to fulfill the dominion mandate are you still with me are you following me man according to design was to be created in the image of God and to be created after the likeness of God. Why? It is to be created in the image of God so that he can have the capacity to operate in the authority of God. And I'll explain that if time permits. He was created in the likeness of God so that he can represent God. So man was going to operate in representative capacity and man was going to operate under delegated authority. So in the entire creation of God, man is the only creature that is not original. Goat. A goat is created after its kind. A cow is created after its kind. But man was created after the image of God and after the likeness of God. The original for man is God. Man is just a miniature copy of an eternal reality. If you are still with me, say amen. So the idea is that man was created to be an administrator in God's kingdom to extend the influence of God's invincible kingdom into physical territorial spaces. Are you there? Yes, now, in order for us to fulfill this assignment, we are going to function in God's authority. So the authority we carry here is delegated. God will delegate authority to you so that you can represent him and you can administer some of his business that is associated with your calling. So what God offered us in Eden is not salvation. He offered us kingdom. And the rebellion of man made us to lose the opportunity to walk under God's authority. And it happens to be that if God cannot exercise, can we, can we really talk tonight? I don't know. Can we talk? 
If God cannot exercise his authority in your life, then it means God cannot fulfill his divine purpose in your life. So you might find a conductor, one boy that's a conductor on the street, calling passengers in his bus. And maybe your eye just opens. And you see that, ah, he was ordained to be a prophet. The reason why he's not a prophet is because he has not put himself in a situation where God can exert his authority over his life. As long as God cannot exact his authority over his life, it cannot become God's vision. It cannot become God's, it cannot fulfill God's idea. Are you with me? So in the kingdom of God, operating under the influence of God's authority is critical because that's the only way that God will have the right of way to manipulate your life according to the counsel of his will. You are not following me. <laughs> okay, let me come back. So, now that the judicial aspect has been concluded, it will also interest you to know that God's original plan was not salvation. God's original plan was for us to inherit his kingdom and function in his kingdom. So salvation is a remedial initiative. It's a restorative agenda to bring us back to where? Where? Kingdom. And that's why in the book of John chapter 3, Jesus says, except a man be born again, he cannot perceive the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God will be a civilization that is beyond his reach. He will need to be born again in order for him to be able to perceive the kingdom. And when he begins to perceive the kingdom, he will have an opportunity to enter. You are not following? Pastor, uh, Venerable Ike, let me see your, your phone. What kind of phone is that? Samsung. All right. You know, when you bought that phone, it is possible for you to use, there are some features on the phone that you can use without a SIM card. You can connect your earpiece and store some music inside and the phone becomes a radio. You, the phone, if you have the adequate application, the phone can become a calculator. In fact, without a SIM card, you can connect Wi-Fi to the phone and the phone can become a television. But the point is, when you bought the phone, it's not a television that you had in mind. When you bought the phone, it, it's not a calculator that you had in mind. In fact, there's also touch light. Just in case there's darkness, you can touch the thing. It will produce touch light. Those are capacities that the phone has within the scope of its local content. But the true potential of the phone will be realized when you insert SIM card. The moment you insert the SIM card, the phone now switches on another capacity. Through the SIM card, it has access to the network and it can maximize the potential of the network. It's like a new civilization. Through the potential of the network, you can send text messages. Through the potential of that network, you can do video call. Your wife is in America. And say, ah, there's snow there. You can see it through the potential of the network. Now, that's the same kind of thing that happened to you when you gave your life to Christ. The SIM card in the person of the Holy Spirit was inserted into your spirit. And, and, and it, it exposed you to a civilization that is captured in the kingdom of God. So you can now perceive what is happening in the layer of God. And except you are born again, that level of perception is not available to you. 
You get that? It means there is another side of our salvation that is not judicial. That side is organic. Check your scripture, Romans chapter 5 verse 10. He said, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, that means the enterprise of our restoration, the enterprise of our regeneration transcends mere legal realities. Much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So we enter into the organic dimension through the Holy Ghost. So we have the judicial dimension and then we have the organic dimension. We have the legal dimension and we have the living dimension, experiential dimension. So that our work with God is not plastic. It is organic. It is living. It is interactive. It is experiential. If you are still with me, say Amen. amen. So, now, when I pray, I can begin to perceive what is on the mind of God. A, a massive field of possibility has opened to me just because I have the Holy Ghost in my spirit man. And my spirit is regenerated, is made alive to be able to adequately synchronize with the person of the Holy Ghost that is domiciled within my spirit. Are you, are you following me? Oh my. Ah, you are not following me. You know, when I notice you are not following, you know what I normally do? I, the syllables, we just reduce it. So, are you there? Ah, so, now that you got that, you see, because of the judicial angle of our salvation, there are several blessings that are available to us. One of those blessings is forgiveness. Because the same reason why we are saved which is the blood of Jesus is the basis for the satisfaction of the judicial side the blood of Jesus is still the basis upon which forgiveness is predicated for the Bible says in him we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins so all of that is available through the potential that is in the blood of Jesus so Someone that doesn't want to let go sin can say, because there is forgiveness, meanwhile, it will interest you to know, on the matter of forgiveness, I've read white. I try to find all the, all the major religions of the earth, whether there is a promise of forgiveness in any of them. I found none. And I don't want to go doing philosophy there's no religion on earth that has the promise of forgiveness only christianity are you still with me all right so it is possible for someone to say because there is forgiveness so we can sin now and then we'll take advantage of the possibility of forgiveness to make up for our sin every time that we are weak and we yield to sin again and again because forgiveness is available. Then Apostle Paul comes to the rescue in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 1. And he throws a question to us. And the reason why he answered the question himself is because he knows that our generation is coming. Because if that, <laughs> if that question is not answered, all kinds of philosophies, schools of thought, Theological blocks will rise on the strength of this question. He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You are likely to continue in sin if you do not understand the implication of the judicial aspect that have been settled. You are likely to... And meanwhile, someone that wants to continue in sin is someone that has been deceived by sin because sin has deceiving capacity sin sin has a psychology 
He goes around with some products and he's selling the product. What he wants to gain, what he wants you to gain from the products he's making available is pleasure. So sin actually markets pleasure. And if we say pleasure, what exactly is pleasure? Sin takes advantage of your appetites, the appetites of your body. The desire to eat is legitimate. Oh, you are not answering anything. Okay. Because I'm talking about sin. Everybody say. Are you still following? The desire to eat food is legitimate. It's neutral. The desire to sleep is neutral. That's how sex is. It's also supposed to be neutral. However, the Bible makes us to understand that every one of us that knows what to do and refuses to do it to him. Do you know the meaning of that? Satan can take advantage of your tiredness. Maybe you finish working in the bank and you come back home. You come back by nine o'clock and you are tired. And then the Holy Spirit now gives you a transmission that I want to fellowship with you. I tried to invade your bank time and there was no opportunity. Now that you are less busy, can you give me my own time? And you know that he's calling you. He was able to make the impression so solid that he communicated effectively. But because of your tiredness, you decided to yield to the tiredness. Now, sin makes you rebel against God. That day that you yielded to that tiredness, instead of responding to God, that day your sleep was a sin. That's what I'm saying. Because Satan, you are not following me. You are not following me. I'm just saying, sex is, is neutral, just like sleep. But the day you have sex, apart from what God's law allows, it is sin. But if you have it within the allowance of God's law, in fact, it can increase the anointing. <laughs> so this power called sin will be striving with every appetite that you have in your body in order to gain mastery of you with the hope of drawing you away from God. And that power called sin is a consistent reality that we need to combat with. Are you with me? And I'm speaking on the organic level. The organic level. That the spiritual capital that God made available for us to prosecute our Christian life, which happens to be the person of the Holy Spirit in the measure that God ordained that we should carry him. It's more ancient that, than sin. And it has the capacity to undo the desires of sin. So if, if I begin to press into the Holy Ghost, if I acknowledge that without the Holy Spirit, I have no capacity whatsoever to overcome sin. Oh, you're not, you're not. You know, I told you that the first principle that we must acknowledge if we are going to maximize the spiritual capital that is upon our lives, is to acknowledge our, our inadequacy. I'm confronting you with an inadequacy that is unique to all of us, is peculiar to all of us. It's called sin. Sin is spiritual. Your will doesn't have the power to overcome sin. And that's why people that are addicted to smoking, to immorality, they need deliverance. They need to superimpose the influence of the spirit that is superior to sin and the demons that accompany it so that through the help of the Holy Spirit, our infirmities can be swallowed up. So the Bible says it is the spirit that helpeth our infirmities. The Holy Ghost will not come into your space to undo the slavery that your infirmities were determined to bring you into, except you acknowledge 
your spiritual inadequacy. The shape of the New Testament, which is powered by the resource called grace, is such that no man can boast because it's not your effort that is responsible for your victory. Yes, that's the shape of the New Testament. So a man that claims to be walking in the grace of God and his shoulder is like this, does not know God. And he doesn't know the Bible, neither does he know the framework that the redemption has brought us into. It is because the law failed, because our fall was grievous, that God introduced the system of grace. And in the system of grace, it is God that is at work. It is God that is the empowerment. It is God that is the reinforcement. It is God that is the ability so that no man has the opportunity within the framework of that provision to boast. Are you with me? Because it is no longer by power, neither is it by might, but it is now by the Spirit of God. So your humanity and the powers of your flesh and the education, the PhD you got from the University of Enugu doesn't have any part to play in this arrangement. You know it's a very humbling situation for you to be brought to a place where this your wisdom is not needed. <laughs> and the flesh wants to have a say even in your spiritual life. And as long as you still yield to the flesh, even in spiritual things, it's a sign that you have not yet understood the shape of the new context. Because in this arrangement, there is only one that can glory, and that is the Lord himself. Are you there? So when Venerable Ike called me to preach, the first thing I did through my personal assistant was to say, we will not minister in the money, no. And I, even though he has added money and I yield to it, he has added tomorrow money. Now, the, <laughs> the idea is this. If the meeting is going to be in the evening, I have all day to pray. Yes. Before 3 o'clock, before 3.30, God will answer me. So I will start the prayer in the night by 10 because I know it doesn't come quickly God is a king spirit you are not with me he is a king spirit he's not a servant spirit you know as a mo they send demons they say oh boo -boo, go you cannot send God on errand like that because <laughs> It's a king spirit and a king spirit will only move when he wants to move so you will learn how to wait yes in the psychology of seeking God there is something called wait because it's not by power it's not because you are doing like this when you finish doing like this for two hours sit down and wait Some people will come and cry. <laughs> when you finish crying, nothing will happen. Sit down and wait. So if you know the shape of the presence of God at all, you will know that the one that sits in that presence is a king and he will only rise if he wants to rise, when he wants to rise, the way he wants to rise. Now, that's why he, he, he gave us callings. Callings are covenants that will guarantee that he will rise. If not, he has no business. Over. So you were doing your own thing. He called you and said, oh yeah, separate yourself unto me. I, I have something with you. I have decided to put myself in a position where your faith can influence me because of what I have with you. Do you understand that? It doesn't come quickly. You say, there was never a time I did three days dry fasting that God spoke. Never. 
So I've stopped doing it. The one I do now is like 200 days of eating once in a day. You will come before the 200 days, 264 days, 245 days. They're in the midst. The last one I did, it was 264 that he came. When I did 197, he spoke to me and said, I can see that you are praying. I said, what do you mean by this? I've been here for 100 and... <laughs> Now please help me tell your neighbor he's a king. You, you... They, when you start, they will create a calendar for you that, okay, it is this day that I will have chance for him. I'm attending to that matter. Let him continue. Let him continue. Most of you will now do seven days dry and leave. You, they, you, are, you don't understand where you are. You don't know where you are. Uh, you don't know where you are. I began a fasting and prayer. And sincerely, I'm not trying to advertise my spirituality. If that's what you see, I apologize. That's not my intention. Hallelujah. So I began this fasting and prayer. And you know, I was not taught. The elders that knew the truth did not tell us. They did not tell us that before, it would take time before Jesus would come to you. No, but you can see angels. Oh no, are you with me? Now, God will give me the grace to practicalize what I'm teaching you this night. So that you will know I did fasting for like seven months. Four angels came into my, my room. I couldn't see them with my physical eyes. But I knew in my spirit that there were beings inside of the room. So I now asked God, I said, if you are responsible for these things that are happening here, let heat, this heat I'm sensing, let it come on my head, which it happened. That was when I was seven, and I was teaching pro, um, further mathematics and mathematics and physics. So I calculated the probability of, of it being. <laughs> <laughs> the probability of that touch being from God, I calculated it. It was slim. I said, <laughs> I'm sorry, this, I'm not sure, because even in probability, this one you did now is not proof enough that you are the one that did it. That if it is you, move the thing, put it here. It happened. You know, I was not taught. I made another final request and he, he, and he did it. So I now said, I'm sorry, it's not as if I'm testing you, but you know, while I was apologizing, that was when I saw the first angel. He opened my spirit and I was able to see the first angel. Now, if that angel comes, I will know. Don't worry. It, the angel... Wait. Let's make it come. Um, wait. Uh -uh. You are... Oh, you are... We, we can't proceed. We can't proceed. Now, now, listen, listen, listen. Um, I have preached like this before. I went back to the room. And in prayer, God now said, Who were they clapping for? And I couldn't answer. So, you to protect me so that I will protect you. May the Lord give you understanding. Yeah. Now, after seven months, <coughs> an angel, angels began to visit me. I started understanding how they operate. I started understanding how they communicate and how to communicate with them. Or have you studied your Bible? Zachariah was communicating with Gabriel. So it's, you, you can actually communicate with them. And they communicate with you. So instead of me continuing my fasting, because it is God I wanted to encounter, he released angels and I was satisfied. I operated in that angelic dimension for five years before it occurred to me that
This was not what I was looking for. I'm still talking about the organic level, the organic dimension. Because it's the Holy Spirit that will give you the power of discernment inside of your spirit to be able to discern the presence of an angelic being. It means the Holy Spirit will introduce you to spiritual beings. I'm still talking about the organic dimension. Most of, oh my God, hallelujah. They, 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 are, they are wonders in the realm of God. Just like they are wonders in the realm of GSM. And you got an Apple phone, Android, um, Samsung Ultra 2023. You got it because of the new features so that you can explore the GSM network more perfectly. So you cast away your Nokia 3310 because Nokia 3310 could not explore it adequately. That's why you were looking for a more sophisticated phone. Are you with me? There are technologies that are domiciled in that realm. And these technologies are for us to explore. Now, one of the things that you must note in this conference is that God wants to provoke us to explore God the way as astronauts explore space. So when I began to press, angels began to visit me in the room. And I realized that it is the presence of angelic beings. Have you ever been in service before and you forgot time? Has it happened to you before? Okay, or you were praying. Praying and then you forgot. Ah, time has. It happens when angels visit. You lose all sense of time. You receive an impartation. An impartation of their own dimension. Time becomes nothing. So you, you didn't feel when time was passing because you were plunged into a reality, a depth that was superior to time. Something that existed before time was created. So I came into this experience of angels and he began to teach me different types. Because there's one that comes and that one comes with fire. There's another one that came that came to activate my prophetic ministry. So that's, are you there? In the book of Revelation chapter 1, you will notice John told us his experience. He says the revelation of Jesus, which God gave unto him to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. The word signified in that scripture in Greek means by sign language so the book of are you with me that book of revelation was signified to john through spiritual signs and the spiritual signs came through the vehicle of an angelic personality if we were only ministers i would have gone deeper and i would have told you the things that i've seen in various territories the things I've seen, I have a gift, the gift of discernment of spirit. I can see the forces in territories. I would have told you a few stories if we were just ministers. So I began to enjoy, enjoy the realm. Education continued. Then after five years, I realized this was not the syllabus. May you not be stuck with power. Yeah. There's something more than power. Meanwhile, one of the angels has come. No, don't worry, just leave me. Don't rejoice, don't say amen. No. So one of them has come. Just so that you will believe me, because I know you don't believe. So, so that you will believe that's why I want to do what I want to do. But my lecture has not finished. This angel that has come here, he came with a linen garment, a cloth 
a piece of cloth that is like linen, shining and glistering. <coughs> and the reason why the angel came with this linen garment is because there is a lady that is in our midst. This lady is like 23 years old. When you were 13 years old, God chose you to be one of the functionaries that will carry his presence from place to place. And this presence is what is symbolized by this linen garment. Now, if what I'm saying is true, in the next 23 seconds, anywhere that lady is seated, this angel is going to cover her with the garment in 23 seconds. I'll be counting so that now so what I'm doing now is because of the education you see the same way I picked that the angels are here there's also a very terrible demon that has come here so the hand of God will be strong on that lady because today is the day of our commissioning the linen garment is going to rest upon her and to rest with intensity have you found the girl oh usher they are they are supposed to be more than one oh. have you found the second one is there any usher on this on this level any usher on this level because Look around, you will find another one on that level. Now, can you still stay with me? Just stay with me. You are not with me. Stay. So, the reason why I did this is because of your own belief, so that you will know that I had such encounters and received education from the Holy Spirit about this realm. Huh? If you know what I'm talking about, uh -huh. If you know what I'm talking about, we can actually stop rain with this, this matter. Yes, we can stop. Maybe we'll have a crusade, something that is legitimate. And then rain wants to come. We can stop it. And it will still rain somewhere here. It will still rain close to the crusade. But it will not rain on the ground. After five years, I realized it was God I was looking for. I was not taught, I was not told that when you are about to have an encounter with God, what he does is that he releases angels to begin to visit you. If you can contain the aura of God that is around angels, if you can contain it, then you are being prepared to be able to stand before his majesty. I'm talking about the organic side, the living side. There are realities trapped in that side and your recreated human spirit is a vehicle through which you can contact. Just the idea of the rebuilding of the tabernacle of David is setting up a system where we can access God without the protocols of the temple. And that's the arrangement that has been made available to us in the New Testament. But the problem is the average believer doesn't want to explore. So experientially I've discovered that dry fasting doesn't work for me. You do seven days, you do three days. No, I, I've stopped that. In your own spiritual journey, when you start your journey, you will know what works for you. There are people in our midst that if they go on three days dry, they can be raptured into the heavens. You have, that means the same way the Bible says that we need to study our body so that every man needs to study your own body so that you can carry yourself in holiness.
That's the same way you are going to be a student of your spiritual life so that you will know what works for you. Because in the school of the spirit, we don't attend classes together. The classes are custom made. They are designed for you according to your calling and according to the texture of grace that you are being modeled to ultimately carry. So in my own calling, I am being shaped to carry divine authority. The kind of authority that will equip me to become a spiritual warrior. So if Satan is doing something in the neighborhood, I'm concerned. Because I'm raised for that kind of job. To fight. To kill. To destroy. That's the shape. So it also justifies the training. It also justifies the, the strategy. Oh, you're not with me. You must find yourself in the spirit. You must find yourself. You are a unique entity in the spirit and you must find yourself. You must find the utensils and the tools that God has ordained that you will carry. That will be an equipment through which you can realize the glory of your calling. Because every calling, whether teacher, pastor, evangelist, prophet, has his own glory. And you must find yours. You must find yours. So it took five years. I was laboring in this dimension until it occurred to me that when I began to fast, the reason for which I was fasting was because I wanted to encounter God. So I continued my fast from the moment I realized now, meanwhile, it's five years interval, and I still have the angelic. But meanwhile, the angelic dimensions that I was allowed to encounter was preparatory to my ultimate encounter that will give me shape. And I'm telling you, if there's anyone that knows the realm of the spirit here, your encounters can become a reason why you don't walk the journey to the end. Just because you don't discern the purpose for which the encounters come. As, as critical as having encounters are in the journey of a Christian, it helps deepen your conviction. It helps deepen your faith. It helps you to become at home with your ideals, even though nobody else believes in your values encounters bring that kind of depth but you see you must understand the meaning of the encounters you have had so that it doesn't become a barricade that blocks you from the ultimate purpose that God had in mind I can walk into the congregation now because the second one has come and I can minister in this congregation prophetically for another four hours non-stop different things will be happening here that's the angelic realm it has opened. I can do that for four hours. All these people here, eh? they will be under their seats. All these, all these people. I can do that. It's the angelic realm. I, I know it. I was trained to understand it. But you see, the reason for the fasting was because I wanted to touch God, to know the mind of God. To know what he wanted. To know what his desire was. Because there's a difference between success and fruitfulness. In success, you are using God to accomplish your own objective. But in fruitfulness, you are allowing God to use you to achieve, achieve his own objective. So you can use the power of God and the anointing of God and prophetic anointing to achieve your own purpose. You can use it to get money, to build a house, to do stuff. What you are doing is that you are successful in the eyes of men, but you are not yet fruitful. 
the reason for which God gave you the anointing, it has not yet started happening. May we not be carried away and distracted by the very gifts that God has given us. May we not be blinded to God by the things that God has given us, either material or spiritual. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I continued in the fast. So I traveled to one country and when I got into that country, I got in by 2 a.m. in the morning. I was ushered into the hotel by 3.50 a.m. in the morning and Jesus comes into my room. He came with a brightness that was so intense that had the capacity to blind the human eye. So I had to bend and to lie on the floor. And he, he passed my room for 9 to 12 seconds. 9 to 12 seconds. And he told me, the youth, the youth, the youth, he said it four times. He said, use your power of sight to deliver them from destruction. And I will open the gates of nations to you. So I left that country when I came back. I started hopping from campus to campus, preaching, teaching, manifesting the power of God, preaching, teaching, salvation, Holy Ghost baptism, power. I went, I did this for 12 years and went around Nigeria six times. Because of a nine to 12 seconds encounter, the meaning of my life for 12 years was captured in a moment of nine to 12 seconds encounter with Jesus. It was when I had that encounter that I knew the purpose for which I was given, attached those angels for apostolic ministry. Oh, you are not with me. It is, there is a temptation for you to think that the first consignment of anointing that you have is the ultimate anointing. It's a test run. Many people Many people truncate at the first level and they never go beyond it. In fact, some, some become carnal and enter into sin and God withdraws even the anointing. I've seen men. The next time you quote that scripture, the calling of God, the gift of God. I've seen a man that moved in grace and he got into serious immorality. Today he's flat. There is no anointing on his life, but he's still alive. So you, the next time you quote that scripture, just know that you might be quoting it with a wrong understanding. Because I've seen the grace of God, the anointing of God withdrawn from a man, and the man is still alive. Not just one man, many men. I've seen it. That was when I knew this was the purpose for the anointing and I started going from campus to campus if you put me on, on the campus now the level of anointing you will see <laughs> that's my real platform I was on it for 12 years after 12 years I was preaching somewhere in Uyo and he came again he said go and resign I was in the oil industry for 16 years when it was time for me to move into the management cadre, Jesus comes to me and says resign now do you know what it means to be in the management cadre? you you don't know it means that the government will give you 20 million for house rent every year 20 million that's what it means people can kill for it Your monthly salary will 1.8 million and if by any means you sleep outside of your home because of national service you are paid in dollars for one night 24 hours oh you are paid in dollars and your house rent is 20 million it will come in january that was where i was going the great one came and said resign Resign. 
You know the first time he said, if I'm faithful to the youth, he will open the gates of nations. So he said I should resign because it's time to go to the nations. I cannot go to the nations and do this job. So resign. And the moment I resigned on the 5th of October 2020, the anointing doubled. So for every layer, are you, are you with me? That's what will cause problem. That clap will cause problem between me and me. So I say protect me so that I can protect you. When I minister now, it's, an, it's, it's a platform of trembling. Because I need to go after this meeting and stand before him and say, was it you I served? You don't know this place that I'm talking about. It's a sacred place. It's a slippery place. The bones of many men that didn't know how to order their steps in that corridor are lying by the side of, of, of the pathway. He said, resign. I want to take you to the nations. Then the grace. And I'm discovered. The second key is called obedience. The more you sacrifice to obey, the grace will increase. The more you sacrifice to obey, the grace increases. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know, I told you one demon came here. You will, you will see it before we close. You will see it. You will see it. You will see it. We do not boast. We know Jesus. We know Jesus. We are called to preach his counsel. And he comes to back up the words that he has put upon our mouth. Hallelujah. So when I began to operate at the second level, I now discover God, if he loves you, he begins to give you instructions. The former three times have I made out your philosophy of all that Jesus began both to do and to preach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that through the Holy Ghost, he had given commandments unto his apostles whom he had chosen. So the proof that you are one of his apostles that he has chosen is that he will give you commandments. He will give you commandments about your financial life. He will give you commandments about your prayer life. One time he came to me and said, if you want to see me from now henceforth, look for me in the night. It doesn't mean it's bad to pray in the daytime, but he gave me a commandment. And my commandment is not a doctrine. It's not something that I impose on people. This is my own personal walk with God. Look for me in the night. So I start in the night. 10 o'clock. When, when sleep is coming, I shake it. Every sacrifice that you pay in order for you to obey gives you access to unlimited resources in the realm of the spirit. So each and every one of us must learn how to practice obedience. Obedience from what you see in the Bible first. Do you pay tight? Do you honor him with your substance? With the first fruit of all your increase? With the basic obedience, you make it a practice. Because the proof that you remember the word of God is that is, is obeying it. Because if you don't obey it, you'll forget it. If you obey it, it becomes part of it, the realities that your heart has handled, your heart has contained. If you are a believer, that is determined to perpetually obey God. Are you there? You will begin to discover that you become sensitive to the things that God wants. God can come to you and say, stop watching Champions League. 
Oh, I know, I know. I know you don't know that I used to be a footballer. I know. Venerable, I know you don't know that. I used to play number 10. I was a midfielder. Yes. I can still play till, till now. It's just that I discovered that the left leg was dead. It's only right. So I knew I won't go far. <laughs> so for me, football was something more than the ordinary. And then he came and visited me one day and said, it's time for you to stop watching football. I died. But when I agreed, he removed football from my heart. Even if, even if I sit before it now, it's boring. But it was something. He knows what can constitute an idol. And the instructions that he will give you is consistent with the likely idols that you can have in your heart. The more you obey him, the more he's at liberty to equip you. It means you are becoming a profitable servant. So he must make more resources available. Number three, you will have to pray much, very much, very much. If you want to keep pace with God, your spirit man must be exercised on a daily basis continually. It must be exercised. I no longer count how many hours I pray in a day. I used to count it when I was much younger in the faith. So I did seven hours. I did 12 hours. I did 18 hours of prayer. But I don't count it anymore because it's a lifestyle now. What I'm looking for is God. And if I don't find God, I won't stop. So it's, it doesn't matter how many hours. Those seven hours are dead if I don't find God. You will pray much. You will pray much until the spirit of supplication comes upon you. The spirit of supplication will make prayer easy. It will give you the stamina to be able to stay until God comes. The spirit of intercession, when it is locked upon your spirit, you will forget about yourself and then you begin, as you pray, you begin to see people in the assembly, in the church and then you begin to pray for them. It, the spirit of intercession can keep you on your knees for those people that like kneeling down, my best prayer posture is lying on the bed. Find your own. There is no scripture that says all of us must kneel down. In fact, if I kneel down, I will sleep off. So I found out that lying down works for me. Have you found your prayer posture? Just like every preacher has a prayer voice, every music minister has a singing voice. And your prayer voice is that voice that you have when you have you know your preaching voice the one that comes out when you have soaked prayer there is a unique voice that even if you hear it you know ah, I don't gauge I don't gauge that voice there's a voice <laughs> there's a voice like that <laughs> there is a voice every preacher knows what I'm talking about and the day you you have not gauged you'll be looking for that voice is not available I know that voice when I hear that sound, everything that you do is going to be enhanced by prayer. Your Bible study, the revelations that you can access, the things that you can understand in the realm of the spirit as you travel is going to be en enhanced by a life of prayer. The Bible says, and he spake a parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. I will pray. I will not faint. I will pray. Because that is the lifeline that God makes available for a man that has come to the realization of his incapacity, of his infirmity. The lifeline God makes available is the pathway of prayer. That your life will be a result of your capacity to exercise your spirit. Because the things of man will come out of the spirit of man. 
And no man knows the things of man except the spirit of man that is in him. Your things, your destiny, your capacity, it will come out of your human spirit. For the Bible says that the spirit of man shall sustain his infirmity, but a broken spirit who can bear. So if Satan wants to really attack you, are you there? If he really wants to attack you, what he does is that he wants you to come to a position where your spirit is broken. Because that's the only vehicle that has the capacity to sustain your infirmity. The reason for the marital challenges, anytime you are coming from a crusade and you hit the devil, the devil will jump on your wife and then your wife will deal with you. The reason for, are you there? The reason for those challenges, anything that you did that was not the perfect will of God becomes a tool in the hands of the devil. You just married because you found a fine woman. Uh -huh. When you start pressing into God, everything that is not God's perfect will begin to shake because Satan wants to find a way to break your spirit because he knows that a broken spirit, who can bear? I was discipling a young intercessor and I told her, I say, just go, don't worry. Go, go and grow up. Go, maybe take five years and just be a Christian. After five years, I will come back. I said, no, I want to, I want to be a woman of fire. You want fire? Okay. I said, okay, let's go. As she started pressing, I told her the storms will come. They will come so terribly that we shake everything around your life. Are you, are you serious? So the storm started. I mean strange things. Because the kingdom of darkness knows your potential. It knows what you can become if, if you realize that you have wings with which you can mount up into places in Zion. It knows he doesn't want you to explore your wings he doesn't want you to to go to places high places in zion to learn of secrets that were put in place before creation began that's why the bible is full of the miscalculations of the devil because there were several secrets that were secured in god before creation began and satan happens to be a created being any man that is going to best satan must have access to those fundamental secrets in Zion. When you begin to mount up, he knows that you are on rampage to discover how to best him. Everything in your environment, he will shake it. If you gain mastery and you find out how to operate without allowing the things shaking in the environment to affect your spirit, you'll become a master. Oh, your finances, as long as it will affect you, he will keep shaking it. Whenever it's time to pay school fees, he will bring famine. When, when he sees that your emotion is connected to your financial state, he has dealt with you. He has put you in a, a position where your mind is staying ahead of your spirit. So your mind is analyzing. Your mind is looking at the situation and you can no longer see God from that posture. There is a hole in your armor. And if Satan wants in that situation, he can strike you down. But you drive with your spirit. When you drive with your spirit, then your capacity for faith begins to enlarge. And when your capacity for faith begins to enlarge and you begin to see God, Satan will still be in the environment, but he will not mean so much to you anymore. Only dead men can arrive up there. May the Lord close your eyes to the distractions so that you can mount up with wings like eagles. You will play with your finances. You will think that, oh, it's a location that I'm in that is responsible for my situation. One of my friends ran, he ran to my father in the Lord. He said, I'm suffering. 
and a door just opened in the United States. I just want to enter into it and see what God will do there. He told him, my, my, my son, a lizard in Nigeria will not become an alligator in the United States of America. You are still a lizard. <laughs> you are still a lizard. Eh? If you can't conquer this your bush, this your village, What, how do you think you can conquer Belgium? That's your hard ground. It's a good training for your spirit. Oh my God. We, we don't see that God loves us. That hard ground. When, when I was going into Makode to start ministry, that's where, that's a land where all the, the minute, if you want to become prominent, you die. I can give you a long list. It's a ground that swallows its inhabitants. Senior men of God gave me the list of people that have been extinguished by the demon of the land. They counseled me, don't go and make noise, go and pray. If God shows you mercy, that, and it's if, they say, whether you succeed is based on if. If God. <laughs> it means no other strategy can work except God. The, the skills I learned in that hard ground. How to hear God. How to do deliverance. Because almost every other person was possessed. So you must know. Before you have members in your choir, you will do deliverance for them first. Is any deliverance that has succeeded that can now move to quiet? If not, the whole thing, the entire system will be a releasing strange fire. The, same, the deliverance that I learned in that territory, how to destroy champs, to release people from, from covenants, how to do spiritual warfare, that was the same skill I used in Belgium. Because of all the cities in this world, nations in this world, they have little, little stories of revival. 18 something, 17 something. Belgium has never had a revival. So the witchcraft, the ancient witchcraft from the foundation is still there. And you say you couldn't de deal with your village. That's Belgium. You want to go and prosper. A lizard in Nigeria will not become an alligator in Belgium. It's the same deliverance that I learned in my corner. Because by the time we got there, witches, three witches had seized the atmosphere. And the presence of God could not penetrate. Ah, I know that thing. I knew it from my corner. God, that hard place God puts you is a blessing. So that you can use, you can learn how to use the equipment that he has placed upon your life. Don't run away from that place. If you ever become a master, it means you learned how to use your utensils to fight. Tonight something will go down. You will see. Something that Satan has planted will go down this night. And you don't need to believe it. Ooh. Satan, he knows that if you go there, you will find something. So he will shake everything. Shake your finances. The time will come, it will bring sickness on every member of the family. Are you with me? Because of time, I have to stop. Rise on your feet. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Jehovah. We bless your name. No, 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 no. Just leave them. 
We bless your name. <laughs> we bless your name. Jehovah. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Jehovah. We bless your name. 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 Jehovah. We bless your name. 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 Jehovah. We bless. Can we can we pray one prayer tonight quickly? That the Lord will keep us focused. That we be not caught up by the distractions that Satan is making around us. We bless. Keep us focused, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. I want to do is to pray for miracles. Second thing I will do is to pray for the release of the anointing. Especially for ministers of the gospel. We have the mandate to change our life and the equipment by which we can effect this change. We'll pray for it, for the Lord to release it. In the name of Jesus. I say, in the name of Jesus. Now listen to the instructions. If you are deaf in one of your ears, just give me my time so that I will be in all the place. Bring to the time. If you are here and are deaf, one of your ears, take off this thing and put it in the ear and cut it off and block it. If you give it to someone that is completely deaf, help the person. So it's your two feet, that's the person. I just did it. If the challenge that you have is that there is paralysis of the body, you may be used a crouch. Or your king, drop your king. Put your hand on the letter and If you have a pain on your tongue, maybe on the back, put it there. You have a growth, a cancer, fibroid, tumor. That place where you can feel the growth. Just hold it. You have an eye condition. Remove your spectacles. Lay your hands on your eyes. If your condition is genetic, maybe your genotype is SS and you are trusting God for either AS or AA. 
Put your hand on your chest. Now, after this prayer, go to the lab tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. Go to the lab tomorrow and conduct a test before so that we can know your status. If I say in the name of Jesus, give me a loud amen. We'll do that seven times to sanitize the entire atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. And sometimes when you say amen that loud, it gives me the opportunity to see into the realm of the spirit. For instance, I saw someone that is a teenager, like a teenager, and the person wets the bed. And I can see that it is a spirit of reproach. A spirit of reproach. And the target of that spirit is to affect your self-esteem so that you will be unqualified for your own destiny in the future. But that spirit is going to be arrested tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus see someone in the in a mist your father is late your father is late but you saw your father in a dream recently and you were eating with him if you are the one I'm talking about can you wave your hand like this your father is late but you saw yourself with your father and you were eating with him now for those of you that are identifying with this call make sure one of your hands is on your head you don't need to come to the pulpit area make sure one of your hands is on your head. Can somebody advise that lady that I'm not asking her to come? Just listen to the instruction. In the name of Jesus! Someone in a mist Anytime you are close to a breakthrough, you have a particular dream. And the moment you have that dream, that breakthrough is destroyed. Make sure your hand is on your head. Because just put that hand on your head. The hand you are raising, put it on your head. In the name of Jesus! I'm seeing that the source, the source of a certain affliction taking place in a certain compound, and I can't tell if it's Onicha, I can't tell, but I know it's the East anyway. The evil materials that were buried in that compound, as we pray as a congregation tonight, those things that were buried will be affected, and your family will be liberated. In the name of Jesus! Mm. You see, the angels that are supposed to... Uh, we, have, we just received reinforcement. We just received reinforcement. Now the Lord is pleased. So we dispatch some functionaries to bring reinforcement to us. Part of the things that I see that these functionaries have brought is a special anointing. We'll talk about that anointing later. This number what? Number four. In the name of Jesus! Hey! Hey, hey, you see, deliverance is already ongoing. Deliverance is already ongoing. I'm seeing charms that have been done against individuals. I'm seeing them failing, failing already. In the name of Jesus! Oh my God. You see, the yokes are breaking already. The yokes are breaking. The demons are living. The demons are living. In 
in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight we rebuke every spirit of infirmity, every disease, every sickness, every curse, every affliction. We break the yoke of the devil in the name of Jesus. I bind every blinding spirit. Blinding spirits be bound. I bind every deafening spirit. Deafening spirits be bound. Spirits of paralysis, I arrest you in the name of Jesus. I command bones come together. Bones come together. Bones come together. In the name of Jesus Christ. I address every blood condition from HIV to hepatitis B to, to genotypes that are unpleasant. I command that yoke to break in the name of Jesus Christ. Pains go in Jesus' name. Afflictions go in Jesus' name. Yokes be broken in Jesus' name. Satan, take your hands off in the name of Jesus. And I speak to asthma. You spirit of asthma, I arrest you. I command your yoke. Broken, 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 broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Every demonic bondage, I address you, be broken in the name of Jesus. I say to the eyes, see in Jesus' name. I say to the ears, hear in Jesus' name. I say to pain, go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. I say to the cancers, die in Jesus' name. Fibroid, die in Jesus' name. Tumors, disappear in Jesus' name. Ah, for those that are watching us online, I send the healing power of God your way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. All right, miracles have started. Miracles have started. I'm seeing someone that had an accident. You had an accident and you injured somewhere around your spinal cord. You've had this perpetual back pain since the time of that accident. But I see that the Lord has touched your spinal cord. And he has effected a healing. Uh, so healings, healings have started. Healings have started. Now, what, what did we sing just now? Choir, can you help me with that song? We'll sing it twice. You have two minutes to check your body. Two minutes to check your body. Two minutes to check your body. When you 
notice that when you check and you realize that there's a healing, maybe your eyes can see, your ears can hear, something has changed. So you come down to this place. Where is the pastor that helped me, the reverend that helped me yesterday? All right, so we have my friend. He will be equipped with a microphone to take your testimony. We'll take like five testimonies and then we'll go into the deliverance session. Um, we'll go into the deliverance session. I can see that someone's ear can hear. No, 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 don't, don't, don't believe me. Check, 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 check. And if you confirm it, you come down here. So we'll go into the deliverance section as we give people the opportunity to check. Now, this is the rule. The rule is this. If something happened, don't keep quiet. And if nothing happens, say nothing. So this is the place you will come if you have detected that there's a change. You come down to the reverend uh, by the foot of the altar and he will take your testimony. Now, we want to do a deliverance moment for five minutes. Are you still with me? If you are with me, say amen. amen. So we'll do a deliverance moment for five minutes. Just for five minutes. If you notice that there's a healing, something has changed, and you have verified it, you come down. No, no, no. Let's do our deliverance. You have the opportunity to come down to Reverend at the foot of the altar. He will examine you. And if he, if he um, discovers that it's a real testimony, he will, he will ask that it be shared. So you just confirm it. Okay, maybe Reverend, go on. We'll take just a few. If you confirm it, I want to see the person that had the accident and you had pains around your back, your spinal cord, and the healing that God has done. I'm looking for that individual among these ones. There's a brother here. There's a brother he there. said he had an accident sometime last month. Had an accident sometime. And it affected the lower back here, the waist. Yes, it affected and the lower back. There's been pain there, but now the pain is the gone pain. after okay, the prayer. So, so come. Come. So let us test this, your miracle. Can you go down? Let's be sure. Wait. Go down. Remain down. Okay, we, we want to believe you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let it be permanent. In Jesus' name. You are released. Yes, Reverend, I'm waiting for you. A pain at the lower abdomen area for over two years now, and it's gone. Pain at the lower abdomen area gone. Can we celebrate the Lord Jesus? It is permanent in the name of Jesus. Yes. A pain at the neck for over a week now, it's gone. Pain on the leg gone for one week. Okay, yeah, it's gone. We give him praise in Jesus' name. Toothache pain disappeared. Toothache pain disappeared. Come quickly. Oh, yes. We give him praise in Jesus' name. I'm looking for someone with an eye condition. The eyes were blurry. The person came into this place and the eyes have cleared out. I'm looking for that person. Yeah? The right ear was totally deaf. The right ear was Could deaf. Could not receive sound, but now Could not receive sound. sound. So, come. The ear deaf. Now, did you test it? Did you test it? Okay, can hear. Can you give Jesus the glory? Lord, we return the glory to you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Pain at the lower abdomen for over four years disappeared. Pain on the lower abdomen for four years disappeared. Take the glory in the name of Jesus. Yes. 
Neck pain for over two years that has resulted in taking severe drugs disappeared. Neck pain gone, two years old. Two weeks, two weeks. So did you test it? Okay, it's no longer there. It used to be here. Oh, we give you praise, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Yes? Lump at the right hand breast, the right breast, for months now just disappeared. So the lump has disappeared. Come. The lump has disappeared. Did you check it? Okay, she checked it. The lump has disappeared for like five months. It's been there? Four months now. It's been for four months. So the lump has just disappeared. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory in the name of Jesus. Aye. So, you know, the, the healing is still. Yeah. Pain at the lower abdomen disappeared. Pain at the lower abdomen di disappeared. Yeah. You are free. Pain at the lower abdomen since childhood disappeared. Pain at the lower abdomen since childhood. Normally, this type has to do with a covenant in the family. So let us see. Father, in the name of Jesus, we use her as a point of contact to destroy any family-based covenant. And we decree that any other person implicated anywhere they may be under the sun is set at liberty tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Released. He was stabbed with a bottle since two years now. Stabbed since 2020. Stabbed since with a bottle at the back. At the back. And since then the pain refused to go, but tonight it has disappeared. Come. Stabbed at the back since 2020. And today the pain. Uh, yeah, you are here. You are here. You are here. Celebrate Jesus tonight. Yes. Chest pain of over two months disappeared. Chest pain of two months disappeared. Chest pain disappeared. Lord, we give you praise. And we say it is permanent in the name of Jesus. Yes. For over two months, she's not been able to move her right fingers. Her right fingers. Yes, but now she moves it freely without pain. And that pain the neck disappeared. Paralysis on the hand. Paralysis on the hand. Move it again. Let's be sure. All right. So life has come back to the hand. Lord, we give you praise. And we say it is permanent in the name of Jesus. Chest pain for over a year disappeared. Chest pain for over one year disappeared. Disappeared. All right. There are three people in the congregation with uh, healings on their eyes and they have refused to come out. Three people. I see three people. Yes? Toothache disappeared. Toothache disappeared. Toothache disappeared. Oh, yes, you are here. It's permanent in the name of Jesus. It's permanent in the name of Jesus. Where is the man with my timer? Ah. Pain at the lower abdomen disappeared. Pain on the abdomen disappeared. Okay. Yes, you are free. Pains on the eyes and on the head for over three months disappeared. Pain on the eyes and on the head over three months. Yes, you are blessed. It's permanent in the name of Jesus. Now, another reverend can help me with another mic to decongest. Um, the, seems a multitude is gathering there. And we must do the deliverance this night. Five, we need five minutes for deliverance. That demon that came, we arrested. Meanwhile, there was a lady I was praying for. No time to finish the deliverance. Where is that lady? Lady, come on. We don't leave unfinished business. The lady of yesterday, we have business. Oh. 
Where are you? Come on. Yes? She couldn't move the left arm for over a pain here yeah, that, that she could feel while moving the left hand, but it disappeared for over a year. Okay, the pain has disappeared. Come, come, come. You are my guest. Come up. We have to. Did you test the arm? Did you test it? It's gone. Oh, you are healed. Celebrate Jesus. You are my guest. Hey, come, come, come. Come, come, come. Oh. Hey, yes. How are you? All right, so I will just pray for you, okay? Pains on the lower abdomen disappeared. Pains on the lower abdomen disappeared. Where are those people with eye? Okay, yeah, they are here. The people with eye conditions. There's someone that the left eye, there's someone that the left eye, the left eye went blind. Your left eye went blind. And during the prayers, sight was restored. I'm waiting for that person. The left eye has been cloudy, but okay. it has disappeared. It has disappeared. Okay, come. Yeah, you are here. He is permanent in the name of Jesus. Somebody give him praise. Give him glory. Since childhood, since he was born, the eyes have been serious issues. The sight blurry. Water's dropping. Even tonight before he came, or while he was here, it was, was there. But now, disappeared. Okay, the Lord has touched his eyes. Come. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Yes? You are he couldn't see clearly with the right eye. Couldn't see clearly. But now it's clear. It's clear now. Yes, it is done in Jesus' name. She couldn't see far from a distance, but now she can see very well. That's short sightedness. Yeah. Do, do you have glasses that you wear? Okay, you have no status in glasses. Okay, yes, permanent. Now we need to move to deliverance because I have just 12 more minutes. 12 more minutes left. He couldn't see at all with the right eye, but now he sees a little. Okay, his right eye was blind, but now he sees a little. Now you can see. Oh, you can see a little. A little. Come, come, come. Come. So, are you with me? You can see a little with the right eye now. Now you could you see before with it? No. So, but you can see a little. Yes, sir. Now, so a healing has started. Can we can we enforce better sight for him? So stretch forth your hand and say, Lord, let it open more. Pray, pray, pray now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, make it clearer. 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 In the name of Jesus. Now open your eyes. Is there any improvement from what you used to experience and now? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, so yes, sir. now it's still improving? Yes, sir. Eh? Uh-huh. Now that's not my fault, that's just the Lord. Hey! You see, Father, in the name of Jesus. We break the yoke and we release him completely. 
in the name of Jesus. So as he goes, it will keep improving, improving. That's total blindness there. The Lord just opened it up. She was short-sighted. Short-sighted. Cleared then. She had severe pain at the lower abdomen after she, she discovered she had hepatitis B. But tonight, that pain at the abdomen gone. Now, go and do a test. Come, come. Hi, our time is going. Can you do a test maybe tomorrow? You will find out. The Lord, even that your concern is gone. Father, let the yoke of sickness break. Let her go, Satan. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. evil spirit do a test I challenge you do a test tomorrow you will see that the Lord has done a miracle in Jesus name yes come come father we give you praise hey. we give you glory now I stand with your daughter against this spirit. I break the yoke. I release her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Let the power of demons, the power of spirits, be broken. Be broken. I release you. I release you. In the name of Jesus, let the spell on your life, let it break. Let it break. That which ties your destiny, that which has brought delay, I confront it by the power that is in the blood of Jesus and I command it break 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 let her go let her go let her go in the name of Jesus deliverance ah huh? what happened to mommy mama had a severe neck pain for over 10 years she couldn't move the neck, but now she's free. You had the neck pain. Come, come. With blurry sight also cleared. Okay, the blurry sight has cleared also. Somebody needs to shout hallelujah. Now, that which was taken away from you, I command a restoration. 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 Yes. Everything taken. Restore it. In the name of Jesus. Yes. You. My neck. It's over 10 years. Over 10 years. Yes. Even I, I, anytime I bend, I stretch my head like this. It will take me, it will cease. It will take up to 5 to 10 minutes before I will regain my, I will regain again. Try again. Try. Test. I have been moving everywhere. You have been moving. <laughs> Hallelujah! Ah, the Lord is giving you. Oh my God! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are free forever, in the name of Jesus. The little boy had severe teeth ache. Okay. But it's cleared tonight. It's gone tonight. It's cleared. Now, in order for me not to violate time, I have to come down. Um, uh, all of you have testimonies. He had toothache. Pain at the upper part of the mouth. And the pain has gone. It's gone. Oh my God. This, the Lord has healed this, this young man. It is permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Who, who knows him? You are the mother. Are you aware of this situation? For how long has he been in this country? Since he started eating, as the adult teeth was coming out, the teeth we are not coming out freely.
one will come, another one will come inside. But the one inside has fallen off and they come swell up. So the thing has gone. But today as we are coming, he told me that he's having some pain at the upper part of his mouth. So after the prayers, he told me, mommy, he's gone. to be a preacher. Eh? Father, in the name of Jesus, make him a preacher. Make him a preacher. Make him a preacher. In Jesus' name. Okay. Four minutes for deliverance. I want to pray a powerful prayer. People on the line of testimony, just stand there, just stand there, just stand there. I want to pray a powerful prayer. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I can't hear you. Man. I say in the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Father, tonight, every demonic influence, every chain, every covenant, tying people to darkness, tying people to patterns of the enemy, Time people to reproach tonight. Tonight, we address the chains, we address the covenants, we address the curses, we address the affliction in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, listen, I am seeing someone's affliction here is tied to a river. to a river I have three minutes father in the name of Jesus that one whose affliction is tied to the spirits of the river I ask that you stretch forth your hand identify that individual identify that individual don't say amen again so that we can we can be fast Now, ushers, if you can help me bring them here, I need to, with this deliverance must be complete. This deliverance must. They have, I'm seeing a river, a spirit from the river, a goddess, a goddess, a goddess. And that goddess, it must fall this night. That goddess must fall. That goddess. So if, oh my God, Father, anyone tied to the river, arrest that one. Arrest that one. Arrest that one. In the name of Jesus. Ushers bring them. I want to do the deliverance at once. This goddess that has been priding herself must fall this night. Must fall. We banish you from Onicha. We banish you from the waters of the territory. We punish you in the name of Jesus. Bring all of them. Bring, let's do it at once. Let's do it at once. We have come to uproot that which God has not planted. We have come to take away that which God has not ordained. That bondage that is tied to the river. Every victim of this goddess, I command the power of God to descend. To the sun, 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 to the sun. Lose them. If I if I need your help, I will tell you. We'll do it at once. We are messengers of light. And we come in the name of Jesus. By the power of his redeeming blood. We demand that you let her go. In the name of Jesus. We uproot her presence. From your domain. We uproot her presence. Every covenant that links them to you tonight. By the power that is in the blood of Jesus, we destroy it. Hey, 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 hey,
Hey! Ushers, you are not helping me. You are not. There are people up there. There are people up there. I'm seeing someone on the balcony. On the balcony. Father, that one on the balcony. Identify by fire. 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 Holy Ghost! Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. The days of the reign of darkness are over. So we decree your liberty. Come out of the bondage. Come out of the bondage. Come out of the bondage. Come out of the place where you were kept. In the name of Jesus Christ. Loose Is reinforcement coming from heaven there's reinforcement so I want us to pray one prayer ah, you are not in the spirit no stop. stop stop it you are not in the spirit listen to me quickly listen quick this window that has opened now can it can it can secure several things can you cry you are the prophet of your family tonight can you stand on behalf of your family and say Lord let everything that you have not planted in my family be rooted out. Tell him. Tell him now. Tell him now. Tell him now. Tell him now. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. See it talking in LA. See a Marika Santo. Yes, it's coming out. It's coming out. Come out from where you were kept. Come out from where you are hiding. Come out from the land of bondage. I call you from in the name of Jesus. Let the yoke upon you. Let it be destroyed. Let it be broken. Here you are saying the name of Jesus. Listen to me, listen to me. I see the spirit of insanity in a certain family. The spirit of insanity, the door is open to the spirit of insanity. Father, that one here that represents the family that the spirit of insanity has gained entrance into. From my left hand side to my right hand side to the balcony. Anyone representing a family that the spirit of insanity has entered. I ask, oh God, locate that person. 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 Holy Ghost. Now, now, can you keep quiet? Keep quiet. Stop praying, stop praying, stop praying, stop praying. We need to help this family. Father, that one representing a family that the spirit of insanity has entered. Let your hand find the person. Because we are going to cast out that spirit. And any victim is going to be healed tonight. Oh, yes. So, serpentine spirits, spirits of immorality and seduction, I disarm your power. I break your power. I break your power. I break your power. I break your power. In the name of Jesus. Bring that victim. Bring that victim quickly. Because we are canceling the activities of the spirit of infirmities. Insanity will no longer be your portion. The one servicing the altar that is releasing this insanity to people. As we pray today, the bitter judgment of God will visit the priest. Yeah. 
I need to touch him on his forehead. That's all. Wait, let me come to you. We close the door and let a bitter judgment come upon the priest manipulating people's destiny. Oh, we bring a curse on his feet. Your spell is broken. Your enchantment is rendered null and void. We release your captives in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The power of the serpent breaks from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of the serpent breaks from off your life in the name of Jesus. We break the cause of reproach that has been haunting your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, in the next 26 seconds, the oil that, that they brought, it will rest. Yes, in 26 seconds, in 16 seconds. Father, in the name of Jesus, can you distribute the oil? Distribute the oil. 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 Oh, it, it's coming now, it's coming. 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 Distribute the oil. Distribute the oil. Distribute the oil. Distribute the oil. Now listen. Those of you in the choir, do your hand like this. Oh, all of you are in the choir. All right, so there's an oil that will come on you to upgrade your ministry. The choir, there's an oil. You just stretch your right hand in my direction. Stretch your right hand. Stretch your right hand in my direction. Father, in the name of Jesus, from among these ones, choose the ones you will anoint and upgrade their ministry. Choose the one you will anoint and upgrade their ministry. Choose the one you will anoint in the name of Jesus. Choose the one you will anoint. Okay, it's coming. It's coming. Choose the one you will. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. Coming stronger. Holy Ghost. It's coming stronger. Holy Ghost. Move. Choose the one you will anoint. Okay, okay, okay. Sister, look at me. Can you look at me? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Just try, try. Just try. Stop shouting. Try. Uh, look at me. Look at me. If you, if you can look at me, you'll be free. Uh, look. Uh, look again. Okay. She's free. Hey. Look. Wait. Stop crying. Just look at me. Can you try? Stand up. Stand up. Don't close your... When I say open it, you are closing it. Look at me. Try. Uh huh. Okay. She's okay. Father, we give you praise. Sorry, my. Oh, they gave me two minutes. Ah, the person there is in the spirit. <laughs> ah, listen to me. Listen to me. I see the horn of a prophet in the in our midst. The horn of a prophet, I see it, is hanging. Now, so. I see the horn hanging. So the impartation will begin to come. One of the ministers, I don't know which one, one of you, when you leave this place and go home, your right hand will become hot. It is God that has left the healing anointing upon your hand. 
And anytime you use that hand, anytime you use that hand on the sick, the sick will recover. The sick will recover. Your right hand will become hot. The moment you leave this place, it will become very hot. It will become very hot. That therapy will continue for three days. It will come hot, it will go. It will come hot, it will go. It will happen for three days. And after that, there will be a consolidation of the healing anointing. I see fire coming from heaven. I see fire coming from heaven. I see fire coming from heaven. There are, there are 14 people that will catch this fire. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14. It's a fire. It's a fire. It's an equipment. It's an equipment. The hand of God is at work. The hand of God is at work. You don't, don't tell me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the request of your servant be granted. Let the request of your servant be granted in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, tonight we thank you, we give you praise. The fountain that has opened, let it not only affect men, let it affect the territory, let it affect the rivers of the land, let it affect families, affect clans, their compound. In the name of Jesus Christ. As so Father, let this fire that has been kindled, let it not be put out. In Jesus' name.